right, all right, all right. I know you're looking at the screen right now. You're probably like, all right, time for another episode of the Kakatsu Story. See where we can go from here. However, this is going to be the last episode for this season. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, right? It's it's a bit weird, right? This is pretty much going to be the end of the Issei's Revenge arc, all right? Well, actually, it's not Issei's Revenge. It's my revenge, mainly. But we call it the Issei Revenge arc just because... I have honestly no other name I can give it, but to be perfectly honest, this is going to be a combination of episode 20 and episode 21 put together because I just want to go ahead and get to season 3, but we got to obviously finish what we started with Issei and all this nonsense and BS that he caused, so this is going to be a very long one, so you know, let's just dive into it, but before we do that, we obviously got to go back into the past in your ass and pretty much explain what happened in the previous episode now when it comes to the previous episode obviously we had Lumine figure out what she has to do with Ozia and her situation end up finding out that Junko has been causing some blood rituals at the church that Ozia was going to and essentially you know had to and essentially figure this stuff out by the helping of Kotoko who is on the side of Junko as well as some mysterious new girl that is with Kotoko basically helping her out but Shinyan comes through and saves her ass before anything goes crazy and now that Kotoko is back with us we also got some good smashing sessions in but we are told by Shoko that we can't necessarily lead the world until the anomaly is pretty much solved because the anomaly is Issei and if Issei is not dead we can't necessarily leave and Shoko and Blue had their moment where they talked to each other and we also found out that Shoko is looking for her sister and Blue promises that she's basically gonna try to help her so yeah there's a bit of stuff happening but all in all I think we can find a way to conclude everything so Lumin basically is just like so, how did you get here? And Shinyan just, and Shinyan just like, I don't know. All I remember was a bunch of other people being caged by Junko. Then that fighter we saw destroyed the Junko and I escaped. I don't even know where we are. This ain't so bad, is it? And Lumi just like, no, it's not. So, that Kotoko girl is going to be a problem. And so Zenobia just come out of nowhere as the ghost she is and just basically was just like ah you're here did you find anything about the church and let me just like yeah in a way but it's worse than you think and she just like i'll just uh wait over here basically because obviously shan has nothing to do with this commission in the first place kind of just was a delightful surprise anyway let me basically explains what gone on with the church basically saying apparently they were praising a high schooler and committing blood rituals in her name and Zenobia is just like that's even worse than not helping people in need what kind of people faith would and then Irina coming out of nowhere again as the ghost she is everybody's being the ghost today and basically Irina was like stop talking bad about the church why can't you shut up and so Irina continues on she's like they would never do anything wrong, and even if they did, maybe it's because you and the devils you are with caused this. And so Zenobia is just clapping back to like, don't be ridiculous, they are all liars, and don't you dare think I would stoop so low, stop being so blind. And then Irina kind of clapping back on some preschool stuff, saying, you're the one who's blind. And so Zenobia is just like, I'm not the one spreading false promises. And so Azia, out of nowhere, kind of just is like, stop it, all of you. You're supposed to be friends. Yes, I can confirm they did blood rituals at the church. They fell from faith. But not everyone is like that. Zenobia, I understand what you were trying to prove, but you went out your way and went out to go in such a desperate way to make a point. And Irina, you wanted Zenobia to follow the faith, even though you shouldn't force her to. In the end, neither of you consider each other's feelings, so why not consider them now? You two don't really hate each other, you just want the best for each other. Please, follow the path you think you should be on, and accept each other. And so, after all that, basically, with Azia having the cooler head, essentially, Zenobia just like, 
Hey, Irina, I'm sorry. And so Irina just like, it's alright, it's my fault too. And so Zenobia just basically like, I just didn't want you to go down the same path I did. In desperation to find something to hold on to no matter what. Regardless of whether the church was good or not, I shouldn't have been so forceful and end up hurting you is the worst. And so after she finally realized what the hell was going on and everybody kind of understanding the situation and gotten better with it, the despair from everybody ended up dispersing. And so Zenobia is now starting to realize, oh wait, something's not right now. And so Irina just at the same time, because everybody was in the, basically in the same space, Irina, Zenobia, and Ozzy are now free from the despair. And so Irina just like, what happened? Where are we? And Zenobia just like, this, this is our world. Weren't we at the safe haven? And so Lamina just like, so they remember? And they broke away from the despair themselves. That's new. And so Shinyan just like, I'm still confused. And let me just like, well, for now, let's just go with Jay. So essentially, that's basically wrapped up everything for Lamine's commission. So a very so a very successful commission for our adventurer, our traveler here. Anyway, when we go to the next act of Act Two. We end up somewhere else in the DXD world, still in the DXD world, but just somewhere else in a different location. And ho oh, ho, it's a Mukuro. You, you see the hand tattoo? You see it? Yeah, Mukuro just there. And so she's also riding with her ride and die, Junko as well. So somehow they are somewhere they are in that same universe where obviously Jay and them is, and they're just having a whole dialogue to themselves in the city. So Junko is just like, I can feel you, coward. Say what you need to say. Oh my gosh, I haven't done Juko's voice in so long. Anyway, Mukuro's basically just being quiet, not necessarily, you know, dealing with what she wants to deal with. Also, if you're really curious, and I don't know how many people are actually going to be really concerned about this, but you're probably looking at Mukuro like, wait a minute, Mukuro was way thicker back in the safe haven. Why shouldn't she think now? That's because the safe haven rules outside of, you know, when you're outside the safe haven, basically, those bodies end up changing back to the normal cells so obviously they're not gonna be the same as they once were and the only way to get it back is basically by decide to change it back honestly so you know they're, they're, we'll, we'll figure that out when the time comes when the safe haven comes back anyway point is that's not the point so anyway mukuro stays quiet yet again and junko just like what too afraid this is why i hate you you're too much of a timid bitch when it counts and so she's continuing on. She's just like, there's nothing left for us in this world. So let's head back to the hideout. And so Mukuro just like, I fear Jay might stop what we we're trying to do. And he's already got Shoko. And it's just like you expected. We are losing. And then basically Junko cuts in. And she's like, we aren't losing, cunt. Let him have her. I don't care how many pawns he has, I always have an edge. No matter if he beats Issei or not, that's not what I care about. I want to see what he does when he leaves this world. <sighs> I can tell you don't want to be around me, so I'll say this. I hate you. I don't love you in the slightest. You're just f meat for me to use, and then I decide whether or not Jay gets to have you or not. He'll make you a slut if he basically has you. Your life has no meaning. You're just a cum dump and a servant. Now let's go, you worthless, traitorous bitch. Damn, Junko's kinda... Jun Junko's kinda going, going in a little hard. Like, damn, she, she is way more harsh than what we have originally seen. Granted, she didn't really give a damn about Mukuro in the game anyway, but still, really adding in that factor here. That's one thing I wanted to, you know, add in with this whole story basically with this whole dynamic between Junko and Mukuro. Anyway, we get into Act 3. I know, right? Very short Act 2. Anyway, but we get into Act 3 and basically Issei just sitting in class about to get ready to go because class is wrapped up. Man looking pissed as ever. I don't care if he looks pissed. You a bitch still. Anyway, Issei's basically thinking when I find that bitch again, there will be hell to pay. Basically talking about Kaneko and myself because obviously 
he got kicked with the Tatsumaki Senpukin. Honestly, when, you know, he was about to clap Kona Kona's cheeks, but I stopped it just in time. Anyway, so basically, Aika is just like, Issei, about time I caught you. And Issei just like, oh, you're what's her face. And Aika just basically like, disrespectful as always. Well, I think you're the one who's been disrespected. And Issei is just like, bitch, what are you talking about? And so Aika pulls out her phone and plays a YouTube video. And so Aika is just like, uh, someone really must hate you. Because all the school in Japan is watching this. It's trending super hard. So basically, Issei starts to watch the video, and <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. What's good everyone, it's your boy, Jason Pi Explorer here. It's been a long time since our last video, five whole years. A lot of change, even if anyone barely remembers me. Last video, I talked about quitting as a YouTuber because I wasn't going to make it, but I want to change that. A lot of friends I knew passed by me and made it big, and while they deserve it, I couldn't help but to feel angry and jealous. I didn't know what to do, so I thought I was done here. But let's just say things always come full circle. I didn't want to leave, but maybe it was what I needed. Danganronpa. That feels more relevant to me more than ever. Anyway, the point of this video is not about the past, but the future. And at this moment, it's a milf hunter time. <laughs> Miki Hyodo. Today, I'm gonna F Issei's mom. That's all. That's also why the location is different today. And then Miki in the background, in the bed, naked, just somewhere, just basically just like, Jay, are you coming, honey? And I'm just like, be there in a minute. And so I'm just continuing back to the camera, just like, now. Issei, I suggest you get here. Who knows, she could be guzzling my cum when you see her. You'll love it. Clock ticking, cuck dragon emperor. That's all for this video, so hopefully you did enjoy. Like, share, and subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and support the Patreon. And until then, it's your boy Jay, signing off. Have a blessed day. And so after Issei watches that video, this man is freaking livid, right? Like this man is actually wholly pissed. Uh, uh, he's pissed as all hell. So he ain't even questioning anything. He is running out the classroom to basically save his mom. <laughs> anyway, point is, I could just basically kind of walk out of the whole classroom. And so basically she was just in the hallway and she was just like, not gonna lie, it feels good to see him in a panic. I just hope you know what you're doing. And then I'm from back to court, so I'm already in the school because I've already secretly did Issei's mom before that video pretty much obviously, you know, was aired. Even though it looks like, you know, I haven't started anything yet. But still, I've already done the deed anyway, so it's not going to necessarily matter whether Issei gets there in time or not. And I'm just chilling already in the hallway with Aika. So basically, I'm just like, don't worry. I've been planning this for years now. Unfortunately for him, his mom was really good and soft. And so Aika just like, you better not lose to him or I'd be pissed. I didn't let you F me just because, you know. But seriously, be careful. I'm just like, I know. I'm headed to the research club. No doubt after he see his mom f up like that, he'll be going there. I'm ready for it. And so now we get into the act of fours. So it's nighttime now, and essentially Issei is on his way and busted through the occult research club room. And Issei is just mad as all hell. And I'm just like, hello Issei, did you enjoy your mother looking like a cum dump? And so Issei just like, what you did was uncalled for. I'm just like, ah, you mad? 
as I spent it, whose mom became my bitch. And so Iris is just like, Issei, I heard many rumors about you, and it's extremely unappreciated. I am severely disappointed in you. Jane needs to beat some sense into you. And Issei just like, ha, whatever. I have the power of a dragon and divide. I'll make short work of him. And I'm just start gritting my teeth because at this point, I'm just really sick of this man. I'm just like, enough of all that. This is why I don't respect you. Everything you've been doing and everything you've been given is handouts. All your powers. They wouldn't even be a thing if people stopped handing you shit. You don't deserve those powers. Like you don't deserve these girls. You never earn anything you bitch and so basically you say just like is that what you think apparently junko believes i'm worth something kiba probably saw that too before he died and so reese is just like wait why are you bringing up those names now and so isa just like oh didn't i say kiba didn't die to some random demon he died to me all for junko's sake and so Reese is now realizing this. Like, yes, even though this is a fake reality and realistically Kiba shouldn't necessarily be dead, Kiba should still be alive in a way. But definitely when it comes down to things, she did experience that. So when it comes to things, Reese is just crying. She's just like, what? How could you? And so I'm just like, I had a feeling you had something to do with it. Bring it, bitch. This room is sealed off with your powers. So no dragon bullshit here. And so Issei just like, fine, I don't need it to kill you. And then Issei just like, and once I'm done killing you, I'll impregnate Kaneko over your body. I'm the only one who can. And even if you did try to get her pregnant, I'd find her and I'll stomp my foot in her stomach until it's dead. After a threat like that, Jay had no more words. This fight basically was everything to him. And so they kept battling for like 30 minutes. And this was ex an extremely bloody fight. The fight was almost done. And both Jay and Issei are on the reserved energy now when we end this at 5. So both are just panting. They're tired as all hell. Like granted, you fighting for 30 minutes, that is an endurance test. Like 100%. So Issei is just like, I won't lose here. I can't. Not today. Of all people, I deserve everything. Good for me and me only. And so Issei just stands up and starts making a dash. And I'm and he just like, I won't lose to a piece of shit like you. And I'm just like getting up, tired as all hell, reason the back, just like, oh my gosh, what the hell is going on? I'm just like, I'm done. This last punch is gonna end it. And so basically, Issei ran up to me and essentially punched the freak out of my left arm. Like that joint actually hurts. However, it ain't gonna hurt as much as this damn fist. And basically I said, Shin. Tightening my fist and just ended with a Shoryuken! <laughs> actually got the name right this time. And finally, laying Issei down with his bitch ass. Anyway, the uppercut was landed, Issei's on the ground, and I'm just like, it's done now. Rhys, you know what to do. And so she's like, yeah. So basically, I'm just like, I waited six years to do this. What Rhys ended up doing was relinquishing Issei's evil piece. Basically having it exposed. Rhys brought out Issei's evil piece, and I'm just like, and now, the Red Dragon Emperor and steps and breaks his evil piece. And I'm just like, it's no more. And so Issei is already feeling the effects of it. He is not going to make it. His evil piece is gone. I crushed it, turned it into dust with my own foot. It was amazing. The best damn thing I could ever do. And so Issei starts to pass out. But Jay told Rius to basically keep him awake long enough with her magic and so at this point i'm just crouching over isei i'm just like you don't get to sleep just yet and i'm just like rius send her in and wait with the others outside 
so we can go back to the safe haven. And so at this point, Rhea is just like, huh, my magic won't last long, so be quick. And I'm just like, at this point, looking down at Issei, looking happy as all hell, because I know what's about to happen next. So anyway, Konako steps on in, and I'm just like, you try to hurt me by taking Konako away. Pretty much almost McDonald's are right paying her just to get back at me. Just to think you own her, you have her. And I'm just like, so I'm gonna hurt you like you tried to hurt me. And basically I strip off my clothes. It's my turn now. And I'm just like, I want you to watch every moment of this. And yeah, this is gonna get into some NCR territory. I don't like NCR, but for this one, for this case, it is acceptable. So basically, Jay got behind Konako and Issei can only watch it happen. And Issei, being the little bitch that he is, ended up crying as he watched Jay F Konako so hard. It was so good. Definitely by far my favorite scene I ever I actually got to, you know, make in this damn game 100 percent So so basically to add insult to injury, cause why not? When, when it comes down to things, basically, while Konako was getting banged by me, definitely, she, she was all like, this is what a real man looks like, Issei. He's always satisfied me. If I knew, I'd never let you even got close like you did. And they just kept going for a while, like, straight up banging in a lot of positions. Like, it was very nice. All Issei could do was just sit there and watch. Because his evil piece is gone, he doesn't really have the energy to talk anymore. And all he could do was just basically cry and just watch. That it was just a be it's just a beautiful thing. Yes, I'm an evil asshole, but only an evil asshole to this Issei bitch ass dude right there. So don't even act like you know, like like if you had if you had your biggest rival and you could smash your lady, don't 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 don't, don't ask me that you wouldn't don't tell me you wouldn't try to have some type of way around it, right? Like, don't tell me you wouldn't take some revenge, especially if you hate them on an extreme level like I do this bitch. Anyway, basically, Konika was just screaming, Yes! Fill me with your hot sticky cum! And I'm just basically just moaning out Konika's name all the time. It was amazing. So basically, Jay announced that he came inside Konika multiple times while smiling so much. And so Konika was basically telling Issei, Go to sleep, Issei. And when you sleep, let this be the last memory you see of me. And so Issei starts to finally give up because the magic is going down and he finally passes away. Yes, I know this probably was like some torture porn, honestly, <laughs> but 100% let me have this. Anyway, once Issei passed away, Konako was just like, I think he's gone now, Jay. If you're done coming, we can leave now. I'm just like, yeah, I, I, I know, I know, just... Whew, I'm, I'm, I'm just enjoying it, honestly. So we both got dressed again, and I'm just like, Dad felt so good. And so Konako just like, yeah, I, I suppose it was nice. I'm just like, I effed you in front of him. It was awesome. And so Konako just like, calm down already. I'm just like, yeah, 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 my, my, my bad, my bad. I, I've just been wanting to do that moment for so long. Let's finally go back to the safe haven. Ajimu should be finished by, with it by now. And so, after Issei's passing, because the anomaly is finished, something weird ended up happening. And so the whole world just started shaking violently and started to break apart. And so, Konika was just like, are you doing this? I'm just like, it's not me. This world is collapsing. He was an anomaly, right? So, it must have been, so it must have been his death that caused this. Ah. Uh, Nah, this is gonna suck. But I need to get everyone out here now. And then Konako's just like, but the despair will. And then I'm just like, I know. But we got no choice. Hold on, everyone. And so essentially, all that was left was Issei's body. And the world of DxD fell into despair completely and utterly. So, with that being said, we into the last story now. So, while I'm teleporting everybody back to the safe haven, my body always goes into a sort of limbo. Anytime I try to basically go to one world to another via despair, my body enters some type of dreamlike state. And so because this body is in the dreamlike state, anything can kind of really happen. And well, 
Guess whose shoes that is? So Junko is basically like, well now, since you're holding a well, and back to the safe haven no less, you must still forget who owns you, Jay. My despair is always with you, even now. Now, let's see if I can tweak your despair just a bit. What? And so that's when Junko finally sees it. The thing that she can't necessarily bug or interfere with at all. And it's Blue, Mari, and Shoko. They were protecting him in this dreamlike state of his. Basically, trying to shield him in a way where, you know, he's not going to necessarily get bothered by Junko's magic. Even though this, at this current point, really shouldn't be the case that they all can just appear to kind of protect him in a way. Because really, they should be getting teleported with everybody else. However, because, you know, Jay's in this dreamlike state while doing the teleportation, basically, he's got a neat, basically, they end up having some special properties about them that allows them to also, while getting teleported, protect Jay in, a, in some shape and form. Mainly because of this dreamlike state. So basically, Junko's just like, so, you won't let me interfere, huh? That's fine. I don't really need to. He may rule over the safe haven, but it will be mine soon enough. Besides, I'm not the one going home first in despair. And so, after that, the whole dreams like state leaves. And remember what I said. Well, actually, not even what I said. Remember what Shoko said about the anomaly and how despair works when you travel to different worlds. Remember what it was like. Basically, in his time, you travel to a different world in despair. The world ends up getting jacked up in some shape and form. Guess what happens because Jay ended up getting into despair and going to a different world. The safe haven is going to be jacked up in some shape and form. So even though Ajimu, yes, did fix the safe haven. However, because of the despair was still playing a role with Jay teleporting basically. There is some BS at play. So anyway, Konako and Jay finally made it back to the safe haven. Goodness gracious, it's been a long time. It feels like it. And basically, I'm just like, Konako, you okay? And so basically, Konako just waking up, she's like, Jay? Jay? What happened to you? And I'm just like, what do you mean? And so Konako just like, you look way younger. Like, really younger. And so I examine myself. And I'm just like, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute, how is this possible? So basically, I'm a Shota now, for whatever reason. Now, now do you see why I had to, you know, change the channel to a, a Shota version of me? It, it, it is what it is. Anyway, I'm basically a Shota now. We're kind of in this weird ass place. Yes, we are in the safe haven, but something within my body is wrong. Obviously, I'm not the older version of myself. I'm a younger version with a dorky ass glasses and a dorky ass backpack. What the hell is going on? And that question will be saved for the next season. So that is pretty much the end of the Issei revenge arc. It was honestly a joy to write and honestly I'm just really happy I got my revenge on Issei after so damn long. It's been a long time coming but I finally got it. But hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification where you else. Also follow me on Twitter, Patreon, and oh wait, how you follow me on Patreon? Well, you can't follow me on Patreon, but I would rather you have you donate honestly on Patreon if you can. And basically, if you want some Kakasa commissions done, that will also be on Twitter. You can DM me if you want to know more. And until then, Boy J, signing off. Have a say. It is a long. It is a. Ooh, this this room is too too hot. It's too hot out here. I was at 105 degrees. It make no sense.